Maybe you're just a guy like me or a person like me that's just trying to figure out how to get your components to work. Like maybe your video wall behind me here. Huh. Maybe you're just trying to get that going. And the metaverse? Well, that seems far off, right? Like you're saying, what a verse? What is that? We're gonna cover that. And no, it's not cutting sugar out of your diet. Uh, it's gonna connect all of us, not screens, but people and places instantly, making money, connection, and also fun. A recent talk with some of my friends about the metaverse, I was sitting down with them and talking to them about the metaverse. And they said, you know, it's too complicated. I don't get cryptocurrency. I don't get NFTs. I said, wow, it's actually really, really simple and very basic. By the time I finish this video right here, my goal is that you understand the metaverse and you lose your mind and see for the first time why this is going to be the biggest and the bigger, I thought it went out, bigger than the internet by huge orders of magnitude. Most people think too hard about the metaverse or cryptocurrency and even NFTs. People overthink it. This is so simple. I would hate for you to miss out on this opportunity because there's gonna be so many benefits that are gonna come out of this. I'm speaking at this metaverse conference that's coming up July 8th for TCG World. It's amazing. I hope you don't miss out on it. This is, um, just like the first cryptocurrency you may not be aware of, it's very simple. I have one in my pocket. I'm gonna pull it out. It's the first cryptocurrency we ever had, right? I'm gonna pull it right out of my pocket here. Yeah. You might be wondering, cryptocurrency. Well, if you look at it, I cut myself on a box. But if you look at the, the dollar bill, the $20 bill, right? Just look at it. Take a look at it. It's got a serial number across the bottom of it. It's got imprints and holograms, all sorts of different cryptography in it so that it can authenticate it so that a central bank can validate if all this stuff is right and the number matches up to the number in the computer. So this is what we're talking about, right? This is basically cryptocurrency. Think about it. It's got a number. It has a validating source. Well, cryptocurrency is not much different. You get a number, and instead of it being on a central computer, they have it distributed to everybody's computer. In fact, you can have a copy of the Bitcoin entire ledger, everybody's bank account, in your phone right now, if you want. You can have it on your computer. It's called a distributed ledger, so everybody has a copy of it. What could be better than everybody knowing exactly what's supposed to be there? Because what happens is miners check to validate to make sure this stuff is real. So when you transfer a dollar from your account to somebody else's account, it's instantly, everyone knows about it, right? So, and it keeps it clean. We always know where those, let's call it Bitcoins for, you know, there's many other cryptocurrencies, but let's just call it Bitcoin. Your money now, right now, going back to the, this dollar, how many people have dollars anymore? Most people have their money in Wells Fargo or Bank of America. Um, that's it. And if you want to create an NFT, you actually have already created an NFT and don't even know about it. You've made an NFT, basically, when you wrote a check. There's a number on that check, there's an account number, and when you sign it and put what the amount is, you've created a check that somebody can cash. That's an NFT. It's a non-fungible token is what they call it in the crypto world. But the reality is you making a check is creating an NFT. I could create an NFT of a picture of this, securitizing this 20 and selling it to you because there would be only one picture of this dollar that came from me <coughs> to give to you and you would own that dollar. So it's writing a check. Okay, so we covered Cryptocurrency, which is like this dollar that you have this inside of a wallet, right? Um, here's a wallet, right? I have my money in my wallet. 
With Bitcoin, you have a wallet that's a number, an address. And that address holds your money and you have a secret key like a password that gives you access, just like you would have on Wells Fargo or Bank of America. You have a username, you have a password. Well, it's the same with Bitcoin. You have a, a public address, like your username, and you have a private key, which is that secret place. And just like the wallet and the dollar, it's the same thing. Bitcoin is the same thing, basically. You get a username, which is your public address, and you get a password. Then, well, you can see what's in your account. And also, when somebody transfers you money, you know that it's there because it's on the Bitcoin network and everyone knows about it. The difference is you don't need a bank. All you need is a wallet. My wallet's uh, compliments of my wife, Versace. Versace is, she got me a Versace wallet. Red, because it's supposed to bring money in compared to, and then also you get a private key. Instead of storing it in a computer at a Wells Fargo data center, it's stored on the blockchain. It's right on the blockchain. So it's in a program that basically holds all of these. It's a fancy way of securitizing transactions. One person to the next. Instead of a bank validating that you transferred money over to somebody, people that are what's called miners basically have a copy of that and they make sure when you send the money that it's sent and you can't spend it twice. Like the banking system does that is Centralized, this is decentralized. Everybody has a copy of it. Everybody with the ledger anyway. Uh, no one is going to really use the metaverse is uh, what you're probably thinking. Or it's a fad or it's going to pass like 3D TVs. People don't want to wear glasses or what if I told you that maybe it's not a waste of your time and this is far from a fad. Even with Bitcoin down 70%, this isn't going away. It's not going away. In fact, today, there, we're entering new legislation. Jerome Powell is talking to Secretary Treasurer Janet Yellen. The both of them are putting legislation together on Bitcoin, on cryptocurrency, and the crypto dollar, the digital dollar. And Biden said, what? 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 <laughs> anyway, these technologies will bring back, bring the first, it's going to bring the world together for the first time ever. Gamers, workers, and merchants, and the unbankable, bringing everybody together in the metaverse. Everyone. Because everyone can be a part of this. I was a huge gamer. I had the heart of a gamer in my teenage years. Then Atari 64 came, and then I got an Apple computer. I wanted to use technology to make money. I felt that Asteroids and Centipede and Castle, if you remember those games, was a waste of time because I started my making money for the first time and my dream was to make money. Well, God, if I could play a game and make money, wouldn't that be incredible? Well, that was Metaverse 1, those games. And then Metaverse 2 came for the most part, which is Call of Duty. But with those games, it had multiple players and you could play in the game where the other game, the first games we had with Atari, you played pretty much by yourself or a person next to you. But like Call of Duty, teams of people from all around the world could play the game at the same time. That was Metaverse 2. But that was only a game. And the Metaverse 2 was stuck inside of the game like Call of Duty. Metaverse 3.0 is a game changer. What it does is connect gamers together, jobs and transactions, all those things, as well as digital and physical assets. I wasn't an artist as a pro or a programmer, so for me, it didn't make sense to build games or to try and sell them. 40 years later, though, there is a whole new world, this metaverse. These concepts are not going to be easy to have. The idea that you can make money with and in games just doesn't seem real. In fact, how big can it be? The truth just happened to be bigger, bigger than any business I've ever done in my entire life, which is unreal. And what's funny is it's the world's biggest program ever. It's unreal with lots of designers, software, AR, VR are becoming accessible for all worldwide, but it's getting crazier. Not only can you build anything you can think of, but there's mixed reality between the digital and the real. 
But with the advent of NFTs, there is now a real opportunity to buy physical, virtual products, physical and virtual services with the advent of cryptocurrency to exchange, to buy those NFTs, the abilities to trade those NFTs, which is just like a car or anything else you can secure, right? It's amazing. No need for physical storage of those, no need for security. It's almost impossible to steal because everybody has this distributed ledger that has a copy of that ledger to know, do you own that NFT? Well, you do. But it's, whether you're trying to figure out how to use your, your component smart devices and maybe you're not trying to turn on a video wall or turn off a video wall like this, Maybe you're just trying to make some extra money. The truth is, there's more money to be made on the metaverse than anywhere else in the world right now. So please, don't miss out on it. Make sure you take advantage of this amazing opportunity. I'm Andrew Cartwright, take care.